this past week the heavens opened and we were graced with crazy cardboard creations and now we are ascended what's going on everybody it's zach from switch force gabe is here and welcome to comment force episode 45 thank you as always for all of your wondrous comments questions thoughts theories ideas innovations and cardboard doodles they need to add a doodle section to youtube comments gabe so you could like that's actually probably an idea that goes a very dark, bad place very quickly. But <laughs> for approved members of the YouTube comment section, you could let them draw doodles. Be Get like fan art every video, man. Be very careful what you ask for, Zach. That is not yeah, something well. that I think would go super well. I definitely asked for Labo. I like Labo. I asked if I can go play Labo because I want to play and see what it's all about for myself. Um, we're not going to really address much Labo, even though that was the biggest news of the week. We have a separate video that kind of was like a Labo-specific uh, comment for us, so you can check that out. This week's show uh, is a little shorter. We're a little short on time, but we are not short on good comments. So, Gabe, let's kick it off with Wild Pants, who says, Gabe is worried about bringing in people who barely touch video games, but I don't think he should be. I think this kind of thing... And they're talking about Kimishima saying that there's more, you know, they want to incorporate more casual stuff and new ways to play, which we saw with Labo. But beyond that, I think this kind of thing guarantees a Wii Switch sports type title. And I don't think it necessarily means shovelware, but maybe things like Just Dance and some other casual titles. But mostly, I think it means adding more easy modes to games we love. Look at how Mario Kart, Mario Odyssey, and the upcoming Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze all have easy slash assist modes, which are perfect for young kids. And like he said, people who've never touched a video game. I think we are going to be seeing a lot more of these types of modes. I mean, and the modes don't really, like, offend me or bother me that much. I know the really hardcore don't like them. But, I mean, if you don't play them, they don't exist. I, I, I say that very often. So this doesn't bother me. And I don't even know what he's talking about with me being worried. I mean, maybe I, I've said something in a video that indicate that I was worried about that. But um, honestly... Well, just the concern of, like, getting too casual fine. Well, I don't mind yeah, it. I, I don't mind it because I see and understand that Bayonetta is still coming. We still have Fire Emblem coming. We have a lot of hardcore games that are still, you know, down the road a ways. So I don't I don't mind it. I think the Switch is a, a great console and everybody can enjoy it in their own way. Yeah, I, I do worry about it. And I like his theory here that they could bring in that audience by offering modes uh within the games that incorporate all audiences mario kart did a fantastic job of this we saw so many countless anecdotes of you know dads and moms playing with their kids who never had played a video game but could because of the assist modes or you know using it with their significant other who wasn't really a big gamer or grandparents or whatever it kind of brings in a little bit more of that uh we style without sacrificing the quality of the game and i'm all for that if you can casualify a game without sacrificing, like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, great example, you can still be Donkey, Diddy, Dixie, and Cranky for the normal game experience. But if you're having a tough time, you never really played a platformer of that caliber, go ahead and be funky and it'll still be fun. I like this idea. I hope they do more of it. Wild Pants, I would hire you if I was Kimishima. And I just want to let you know, Zach, I will always be funky. In the meantime, <laughs> Zachy B says, I think a Nintendo Labo set with the big characters, I think that would get us more mature and true Nintendo fans on board. Like a Link sword where you see the screen links of you as monsters come at you and the cardboard, and they have the cardboard turn into a sword where the bottom and in the top, you swing the sword to fend off the enemies. That's just an idea. They could do a Zelda collection and a Mario collection or even a Kirby collection. Shout out to you, Zach. And a Pokemon mm -hmm. collection. So I think he's just talking about bringing you know, Nintendo mascots on board and having a few fun activities based off cardboard that you can do that would fit them. Does Labo ever bring in major mascots, Gabe? I can see it happening. I mean, probably not anytime soon. I do think that they want it to stand on its own and see how it performs. But, you know, if it's successful, you can make it even more successful by bringing in this very wide appeal character base that they have. Yeah, I'd really like to see this as well. Um, I think it's probably smart that they lead with uh, original creation, so it's not relying so heavily on Mario. Plus, there's already a Mario game, a Zelda game, a Kirby game is coming. I do hope they do this, though. I think it would only increase the success, like you said, Gabe, and it would be really fun. Nintendo Land was a great example of how incorporating the different franchises into minigames can be cool. I liked a lot of those, specifically Mario freaking Chase Gabe. Great, and, uh, great, great game. It's one of Nintendo's best games on the Wii U, honestly, and it's like a minigame within the launch day title. But anyhow, um, no, I think this would be super fun. And think about like how cool the cardboard could be if like you could build like 
little toad, or even if it just had like little Triforce icons, or like that, you know, since it is physical, you could do a lot from there and to make it look special or make it feel cool and almost make these Labo Toy Con um, little show pieces of their own. It's like such a double edged sword that Nintendo fans have to deal with, right? Because, yeah, you want Mario and Link and everything. But then we also want new IP. I remember like originally when Splatoon got announced, I heard and saw comments online of like, hey, why can't it just be like Mario with like these like squid guns? Like, why did it have to be these weird squid kids? And now, of course, we've adopted and we accept the squid kids as part of the stable of of Nintendo characters. So, yeah, I I think eventually, hopefully, if Labo exists for long enough, yeah, I think it's a no brainer to bring all that stuff in. But uh, in the meantime, though, I think we can move on to Dave Tate. He says, if it was coming, it would make sense it being this year with it being World Cup year. The GameCube version is a classic. Such good fun. I love to see it get a fresh uh, lick of paint. I I thought you were going to say coat of paint, but lick of paint works well as well. And this is in reference to the Mars Strikers video we made talking about how that game needs to be on Switch. And obviously Dave here agrees. I know Zach agrees. World Cup is happening. I forgot about that. But it would have been perfect. It still could be perfect, right? I asked you that. I said, hey, do you think there's any chance we get aces and yeah. strikers in the same year? And you're like, no way. So, Yeah, I, I, until I saw this World Cup thing, then that made me like reconsider because it would tie in beautifully. I have a deep fear, though. Uh, Nintendo likes to tie into the Olympics. What if they just did like a really like true to, true to soccer World Cup Mario game that just wasn't... Like, strikers needs to be wholly unique. You know? Yeah. I don't I don't A little bit too much of a tie in, yeah, that would be a bad thing. I'm fine having GameCube virtual console. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Also, well. don't lick paint. Don't don't eat Tide Pods, don't lick paint. Please. Yeah. Don't put things in your mouth that don't belong there. Not Andrew says, I've never been an indie fan. I always just bought the triple A's like everyone else, but since I had a switch, they are the only games I play. Stardew, Enter the Gungeon, Rocket League. Well, it's not so indie anymore. But still, these are all I play nowadays. And I think it's interesting to watch the uh, the ebb and flow of the indie thing. Like, way too many indies. Boo. Oh, my God. Switch has the best indies. Stop making indies. I want more AAAs. Wow. Indies are actually really cool and, in some cases, more interesting than current AAAs. And I just kind of want to get your and my uh, current take on that. Like, where we're at with the indie AAA argument slash enjoyment slash what should switch do i'm of the mind that indies okay here let me let me figure out a way to phrase this so i don't tick people off to me games are games i don't care if you're triple a i don't care if you're indie if i am having fun that's all i care about i want the game to be Mm. good i don't care if it costs five dollars i don't care if it costs sixty dollars i don't care if it's labo when it costs eighty dollars that doesn't matter I just want the experience that I'm currently having with whatever I'm playing to be good and pleasant. So we both have a ton of indies that we really love. You know, Golf Story, uh, SteamWorld Dig 2, even Snipperclips is sort of an indie. Yeah, it it had a lot of help from Nintendo, but that game like started off as something completely different uh, just visually. And Nintendo came, gave it funding, and it looks like way better now. But I, I I can't complain. Stardew Valley is an amazing experience. Rocket League, a game that has sold millions and millions of copies, is technically a small indie game made by a very small team. So all of these things that a lot of people really enjoy, I don't see how they're a bad thing. I understand the the trepidation with like, hey, too many indies this is all shovelware. Like, yeah, sure. There's a million little like weird obscure games that come to Switch that nobody will that we never even consider touching and i have to imagine not that many other people would do either so like those i kind of agree with but the ones of quality i feel like those should be like left alone and put in the same category with all other games yeah i for me personally i i definitely spend more time playing the indies uh than the triple a on switch specifically it's the opposite on other platforms and i think a lot of it is because i play my switch handheld so often it's just a better fit um, I also really enjoy a lot of the indies that Switch has gotten. Like, they really kind of have, like, a a pretty bomb lineup lately. Like, you're killing it with SteamWorld Dig 2 and SteamWorld Heist and Enter the Gungeon and uh, Celeste and what are the other ones I've been playing recently? Oh, freaking Astro Bears Party, which I have dubbed Pasta Jump. Pasta Jump is one of my favorite games of the year. 
Um, there's just so much good stuff. Even going back and looking like Goner and, and Graceful Explosion Machine. I don't know. I like the variety. I like the fun. Um, I love that to me it feels like a portable... I don't want to say Steam because Steam is so massive, but it's beginning to get that way. There's so many game choices, and yeah, there are the, the few stinkers, um, but you can definitely sift through that quite easily and grab a bunch of gems. So for me, I am leaning more indie, at least on Switch. Yeah, I mean, and you mentioned Celeste, right? That's a game that I've been playing exclusively handheld, um, you know, for, for the handheld video that I recorded. And just because I've, I've been moving recently, little fact that a lot of you don't know, uh, been doing a lot of moving, so I didn't have my entire setup done quite yet. So that's what I've been doing, just playing Celeste uh, handheld either on the sofa or in bed. And it's such a good experience. And that's an indie made by a very small team. So... Yeah, I, I'm I'm all for it for the most part. Of course, once it gets to a point where it's just nothing major is happening, then it becomes an issue, I suppose. But for now, we do have a lot of majors still coming, so it's okay. Absolutely. You know, we don't have a lot of game. Apps, Zach. We don't have a lot of apps. And Nintendo since 1995 says, we don't get many of them. What do you mean? We have a whole two apps one for for the united states i thought he meant one for us uh one for japan maybe that is what he meant that's so many okay he's being a little funny here but yeah we do have two apps we have hulu and what's the one that japan has i forgot what that one's called uh i'm gonna look it up as we talk about this but but yes uh, we we need apps while zach looks this up uh although i will say this People were, like, clamoring for, like, Hulu and netflix and yeah we don't have netflix or youtube yet but we have hulu i have not used it not once and, I, and I'm subscribed to Hulu, so that, that should It's Nico something. Nico. Yes, Nico Nico. There you go. Is what they have. Yeah. I, you know, we have an, an upcoming comment about Netflix, so we'll address it there. Um, this is just kind of like the funny comment of the week. I like your joke, Nintendo, since 1995. And we'll get to Netflix later. In the meantime, though, we're going to take Demo Art, who says they need an E3 game. There's more of his comment, but that is what I wanted to focus on here. Um, what do you think is going to be the focal game of E3 this year, Gabe? Like how Mario Odyssey kind of dominated Nintendo's floor space in Los Angeles. What game does that this year? It's tricky. I, I guess it depends on how far along Metro or Pokemon are. Mm-hmm. Right? Because if we still believe that we get one this year, which you do, right? Making trips, yeah. being clear. You still believe we get one this year. Obviously, if we get one, that's going to be that. If not... <sighs> I think a Donkey Kong game is, is far more likely. I think a Smash port is far more likely. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's so difficult to predict, right? Because, you know, we have a lot of evidence that this isn't going to be a big first party year at all. It's going to be a lot of third party stuff happening. So maybe there isn't one big game this time, right? I mean, they still have to show us Fire Emblem. That's still happening. Because the last few years have been Big Zelda and then Big Mario. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they revert back to sort of just a very uh, varied floor space um, with diverse sections. Um, I love that, though. I guess I, I love that we don't know what the heck is happening towards the end well, of the I, year. I mean, to me, if it's Pokemon, that that's that serves the uh, that serves the big big space, like the big show. I don't know that Metroid Prime Four does that. I mean, they can I mean, make we, they they can make it. They like, could make it, but yeah. we've talked about the sales numbers of Metro Prime. Do you think that they really would devote like, oh, we're gonna get like a mock ship and a mock whatever planet for for Metroid? Yeah, I mean, probably not. But I mean, they they, they can put make that push for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna. <sighs> I think the Smash board is gonna have a huge presence at E3. Um. And then, yeah, I really hope. I really, I, I, they have to have something that's unannounced, and so maybe that, you know, works well. You're gonna have a Labo uh, ToyCon uh, pack. Oh God, pack three and even, four. How, how do you? I don't know that you can demo Labo very well at E3. Not very well. You can try, I guess. I mean, and, but just go back and think about what E3 Nintendo is like, right? Like. The space itself is huge, right? But the lines are insane. But the sheer amount of uh, actual displays, not that many, right? That There was one for um, Fire Emblem Warriors, right? There was only, like, one little, like, station that, that had, like, two kiosks in it. 
uh, Pokin was one that had b- a bunch more uh, stations. So I, I think they like to focus on multiplayer things. As mm-hmm. far as like floor space, make sure as many people get to try it out. I don't know how you demo Labo, honestly. I mean, that was a question. Who knows? I just feel like the things are going to be either like stolen or broken or. Yeah. I mean, uh, unless ToyCon 1 and 2 are it for a while and we don't even get too much Labo going on at 83, who knows? Yeah. I. Okay. Again, like Metroid is being developed by like a different studio. Uh, Pokemon is obviously Pokemon Company. So I feel like Nintendo has to have something for fall. Like their their thing, like their team. new Super Mario Brothers Switch, Yoshi. It's coming. It's coming November. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of this. Though, in the meantime, Devin R says ports are fine in my opinion, especially since it seems like they're packing them into the spring. Every port they announce is launching in the first half of the year. Like you guys said, these games didn't have a fair chance to sell on the Wii U and deserve a second chance. I agree. Yeah, I I. I like that he brings out the point of them packing them into the spring, and I hope Nintendo does stick to that of like, hey, right now it's kind of like the the doldrums, the early periods. There's not even a lot coming for you know multi-platform releases, so let's put some ports in so people have stuff to play. And then yeah, our big new stuff is going to be you know summer fall, and if that's the case, great. If we get to E3 and they're like, we've got Wonderful 101 and Pikmin 3 and Mario Maker, and then be like, okay, well now. Now, this is silly, Nintendo, but as of right now, um, I'm going to trust that the ports are stuck in the f- the, 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 the slow months, and the, the fast months, Gabe, are going to be full of games that just dash across our hearts and captivate our minds. Bayonetta 3, come out this year. Douglas Cook, we get back to the Netflix issue. I'm curious how many people actually want Netflix. I personally don't care if we ever get Netflix on Switch. I have many devices that already run Netflix, and if my Switch is with me, I'm probably playing a game anyways. If I'm traveling away from home and want to watch Netflix, I more than likely have my phone or my tablet with me, which both have better battery life than the Switch does. I do see why people would want it, and I support the Switch having it. Just curious to how many would use it. And so I want to ask you and expand. Even the thought of movies on Switch makes me sleepy. No, um, <laughs> but, like, what... Okay, would you use Netflix? And if not, is there an app you can think of that you would use? I would never watch a video on my Switch. Not once. Why? My phone is way higher resolution. Like, this thing's 720p. If I can have that experience better... I mean, my phone is with me 100% of the time. And, and again, mm-hmm. this is just me. I, um, like Douglas here, I support it being on Switch. I want it there for the people that want it. I'm just not one of those people. Like, I... Again, I am a Hulu subscriber. I watch Hulu semi regularly. I'm not never once on Switch. I haven't even opened it. So there's no app that you would open on Switch. No, I, I was like what, what if what if what if NFL Sunday Ticket was on Switch? But NFL Sunday Ticket's on my phone. Yeah. So, so okay, you want the Switch to do things that your phone can't do, which is play really good top tier games. Yeah, I I fully agree. I mean, I I never would use it for that. I think it's great to have just because it you know. It, looks better on paper and checklist wise competes then with all the other can, can i give offerings? you a, a dream app that would not, i mean it's not possible give me an app that i don't have to pay for that i can watch every knicks game on because watching knicks game God. you know i'm a knicks fan watching their games in texas is difficult right uh like yeah you can get like league pass but it's like really expensive and i do pay for it but mm-hmm. if i can somehow have a magic app that lets me watch knicks games for free on switch i'll do that that's the only way i'm ever going to watch anything on switch <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to throw a little fun thing in there. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this is a good one, Gabe. This guy is making us make a choice. Okay. Well, I'm I'm making him make us make a choice. All right. I need to make the choice of reading his name correctly here. It's Rikuki 2, right? Did I get that right, maybe? I like it. All right. He says, we also need a new Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, a new uh, Warrior World, 2D Metroid, Pikmin 4, and so on. Wait, what's the choice we're making? Okay, you only get one of these. Okay. This is in, in uh, reference to we want Mario Strikers, but okay, let's say we get Strikers. Now you have to pick one of these. Hmm. D- don't hate me, guys. None of these jump out to me as like something I would automatically pick. Can I give you some reasons? Yes. I want to lean towards 2D Metroid just because, you know, we haven't had one in like, well, so long, right? But... Axiom Verge is almost a perfect Metroidvania in my eyes. Like we mm-hmm. get we get 2D Metroidvania is an awful lot. 
Mm-hmm. And yes, Metroid will probably be like it's Nintendo making it, so I feel like it would be better. But <sighs> can I can I pick two D Zelda? Can that be it? He says no, and so on this list. Not in so on. Can I pick and so on? No game. All right, all right. Give me Luigi's Mansion then. All right. So my easy first answer is Pikmin Four, but but I, I, my loophole is I know that Pikmin Four is Coming. all but yeah. done. Yeah. So then I want Wario. I wish he would have said Wario Wear, because then that would be a. Then it's a collection of mini games that you might not even like. No, I love Wario Wear. No, I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. I'm not gonna. No, I can't always create loopholes. I'm gonna go with Pikmin Four, hands down. Okay. Yeah, and again, the only reason I didn't pick 2D Metroid is because there's so many great Metroidvania games. I do want to give a shout out to Dandara, by the way, because that's coming. I see if there's a couple of gifts and like early gameplay I saw, that looks like a fun little Metroidvania. So shout out to that. The final comment of the week is from Senzo XD, who says there should be a balance of new games and remakes. I like my fair share of remakes, but I don't want Nintendo to pander to the audience who skipped the Wii U. Some remakes like Tropical Freeze that adds very little will only work for those who skipped out. But remakes like Zelda Wind Waker HD, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe adds new stuff to make it. E- to make it fun, even if you play the originals, like I did for Mario Kart, but maybe that's because it's more of a multiplayer-focused game. Um, this was interesting to me because I do hope that we get collections or definitives versus just ports. And I do think that multiplayer is much easier to swallow for me because, hey, Mario Kart 8 again, that's like a really fun game that you can play with your friends and Maybe you have different friends, or maybe your family's more into Switch now than they were Wii U, or Smash Brothers, same type of thing. Also, the replayability of multiplayer, like, it's great to have your favorite multiplayer games with you on every console, in the same way that we want Strikers, in the same way that people are clamoring for Smash. I don't feel it applies as well to single player, and that's why, to me, some of the the remakes are a little shakier. I agree with a lot of what you said. My only thing is I do feel like there is a balance, right? We got we got the remakes of – or not remakes. It's more re-releases and porting over of Bayonetta 1 and 2. But we also got the announcement of Bayonetta 3, brand new game. So, yeah, the mini direct didn't have a ton of new stuff. But I do feel like the new things are coming. And I, I just wish it had a couple more new things announced. I mean, Yoshi and Kirby are, are new, right? Uh, people kind of forget about that. We have a new Fire Emblem as, as well, like I said. But I do agree, though, that multiplayer is way easier to swallow. I feel like nobody complains about a Smash port. Like, I I think that that just gets unanimously accepted, and people are going to have a good time with that. And I don't think it's because, oh, Smash is so beloved. It it definitely is, but I don't think that's the reason. I honestly think it's the multiplayer thing. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I I think that multiplayer does. Like, Tropical Freeze, quality-wise, is a phenomenal game. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's more pause with that than there is, you know, or will be with Smash Brothers when that eventually, you know, inevitably gets announced. But... I do think, you know, kind of combining some people's comments, I like the idea that, okay, maybe the ports are for this first spring. That's what the mini direct is for. We don't know anything about summer, nothing about fall. So let's let Nintendo uh, have their time to get through spring, and then we'll get the goods from there. And we'll be back next week to give you more goods from Comment Force. Thank you, as always, for being a part of it. We love you guys and girls so much. We're so happy with the community and so happy with the channel. And you guys are such a major part of that. We appreciate your thoughts. Keep those comments, ideas, and conundrums coming. It's time for Advice of the Week, and Gabe is going to educate you all. Today, I am going to tell you guys a little bit about sleeping and how you need to do it an awful lot. And don't be like me. Four or five hours a day is not enough. Your brain needs at least seven to eight to function at its max capacity. I suffer from not being able to be at the best version of me every single day because I don't get enough sleep. I'm trying to work on it. Uh, Zach can attest to that. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just want to make sure that you guys are all getting some sleep because it is very important. There's a ton of great games to play. There's a ton of really fun stuff to do and people to hang out with. But take care of yourself. Get some sleep. It's a good one. Yes. It's a very good one. Um, mine is going to be, uh, I just watched a very interesting movie called Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. And the thing that was most evident there was that people operate so much on emotion. And I think it's always important to take a deep breath and look at the situation, the pros and the cons, and try to be rational and maybe even sleep on it. Uh, because usually the worst decisions are the ones made in the heat of the moment. So there you have it. Two yes. pieces of advice. 
It's a good and one, Zach. That's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, maybe... Maybe we'll do a your advice one week where you guys give us advice. <laughs> hey, give uh, us your we'll, advice in the comments. <laughs> yeah. What is your advice for us? What's your advice? Or not even for us, just for the world in general, for the community. We're going to have a freaking comment force all dedicated to advice. That would be fun. In the meantime, though, make sure to subscribe. You probably already subscribed for watching the show. Thanks for being a part of the show. We've got some more cool shows coming your way that will be weekly affairs. So stay tuned for those. Check them out when you can. And until next time, everybody, for myself and Gabe, 45 in the bag, baby. Switch Force, out.